It'll be on everything that we've done in C sharp so far. So specifically that, um, and including the stuff we're going to do today and next week. So specifically, you'll have all the stuff that you should know from first year. In other words, the primitive types. In other words, the int, the hello, the character, and the new one that C sharp introduces, which is bool, and all the various different things you could do with those: the adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, free increment, post increment, modulus operator, the while loop, the for loop. And then to that, we'll add the C sharp specific stuff. So you know, we name to create a C sharp console application. And the only really thing we've done in C sharp so far is probably the string, really, isn't it? So the only new thing we've done, isn't it? <coughs> so it'll certainly have strings in it. And then the stuff we're going to do today and next week. So today we're going to start out looking at arrays in C sharp. So I guess you guys have done arrays in first year in C, have you? Yeah. So we'll basically do the same sort of stuff, but I'll show you the C-sharp way of doing the stuff that you did in the first year. And uh, arrays, what's an array? Can anyone tell me? <coughs> Collection of objects, what's the characteristic of it? They're all of the same type. Okay, so it's a collection of objects, all of which are the same, or a collection of things which are all of the same type. So we'll look at the C-sharp way of doing an array, which is very similar to the C way of doing an array. There's a few very small differences. And if you like, there's a few very nice improvements. Okay, So we've got arrays, and then also uh, we're going to look at the struct. And while an array is a collection of things which are of the same type, a struct is a collection of things which are <coughs> different types. All right, And then you can have arrays of structs. And then you can also have structs which are part of an array as well. All right, so the array is the same type as the C sharp. They are, yes. When you declare an array, you say what type of array is it going to be. So it might be an array of objects, and then it might be lots of different things. Yes, sure. So you can use polymorphism in an array, but we haven't really covered that yet. So you don't need to worry about that for now. But eventually, yeah, you'll be able to make an array, and you'll be able to change the types in, in an array by using what they call polymorphism. Don't worry about that. So, um, structs in C sharp are quite different to structs in C, because the struct in C is basically a collection of data, whereas the struct in C sharp is a collection of data plus all the things you can do with that data. So, struct consists of the data plus, anyone? <coughs> methods, right? And there are special types of methods as well called properties, which we're going to look at. <coughs> And we've got two types, we've got a get property and we've got set properties. So these are read only properties and read write properties and then you can make write only <coughs> properties and things like that as well by making gets and sets and things. So we've got methods, properties, and then we'll also look at constructors. Okay, and I think that's that's it. That's everything that's possibly going to occur on your... We might probably, I'd say by next week we'll probably have done files as well. But this is the key stuff, okay? If we get all this stuff done, I'll be happy. We'll be well on course then, right? <coughs> so it's all right with everybody. So this program that we're going to write today will be up on web courses. But if you have a laptop, I suggest you type the program as we're going along and get the compile errors, etc. That way, you'll, you'll learn by typing in the program as we're going along. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make an array. And I'm going to call this array agent. This is, first of all, how you make an array in C-sharp. So that you'll notice the syntax is a bit different to the syntax of C, but you can figure out from looking at this. You know, it's a very close mapping to how you would have created an array in C. How would you have done an array with, say, five entries in C? You go int, <coughs> and or, or open bracket, five like that. Yeah? In C sharp, this is how you make an array. Actually, that might work as well, because that looks like it's going to compile, but I wouldn't do it like that. I would do it like this. Int uh, ages equals new int, and then you specify what the size of your array is going to be. And in this case, let's make an array of five entries like that. That's the same as uh, Java, isn't it? Yeah, exactly the same as Java, about 100%. So that's how you make an array. So you go, 
Integer query is a is um, an array of integers because you've got int open square bracket and close square bracket. This is new int five. So that's how you make an array of five integers. So in the same as in C, how you would populate that ar array, you just use the square brackets. So you can go ages. Uh, what's the first element? Zero. Element zero. number zero. So the elements in this array go from zero to <coughs> four. Zero to four. So you can go ages open square bracket zero is equals to. Uh, 19 like that. Okay, so what we'll do for this one here, and just because we were talking about the modulus operator last week, I'll use the modulus operator to populate this array with random values. <coughs> Watch this. There is a thing in C sharp <coughs> called a random. So you go random or equals new random. And actually, I looked this up yesterday, and if you hover over it as well, it tells you. It says, uh, we made a bit so we can read it. It says, using a time-dependent default seed. So that's why when we used random in the class on, was it Friday or Monday, we got a different sequence of random numbers every time we ran the program. And that's because it automatically initializes a time-dependent seed. Right, so you'll always get different sequence of random numbers when you use the random class like that. So random or equals new random, and then you can go age is zero, at position zero equals 19. So that will assign the value 19 into the zeroth element of the array. So the first thing to say about arrays, which is different than arrays in uh, C, is that arrays in C sharp are objects. All right. So an object, we've kind of talked about this concept a little bit. An object consists of, same as a struct, it consists of data and also methods. So things you can do to the, the thing and also the information that it holds itself. So. What property or what, what 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 property do you think an array should have? <coughs> if you were going to make an array class, what's the most important thing that you should be able to Man. ask the array it's and get back some information? Huh? It's, size. it's size or the number of elements in the array. <coughs> so in C, there's no way to do that. And in C, I presume you can, I don't know if you've done it, but you know in C you can write a C program which writes you know, at the start of the array or before the start of the array. And you can write C program that writes past the end of an array, can't you? You know that? If your array has five elements in it, you can write an element number six, element number seven. There's nothing in C to prevent you from doing that. And what happens if you do that? You'll corrupt the memory, you'll corrupt the stack, and you'll corrupt memory. Your program might crash, it might not crash, it might run for a little while, and then it'll die two, like two hours later. Have you seen that before? Yeah. Have you seen examples of that in C? Well, you're saying that you're declaring data at a certain which a certain amount of hole is in it, and then you can bypass it, like you just add constant Absolutely. Number. In C, there's nothing to stop you from doing that. It's not what's called bounds check, right? Do you want a small example of that? Or have you seen it before last year? Yeah, like if, you do a, if you do an array, like a, a string array in C, and yep. uh, you forget to put in the, the terminate little character at the end, yep. and sometimes you go to display, it'll display the rest of the memory. You're right, yeah. I'll just show you this really quickly, right? I, I'm not sure if you've seen it before. Let's go just go and make it a C++ uh, empty project. Oh, test. This only take five seconds. Just okay. test 99. Over here, I can click add new item. This is how you make C++ or C programs in Visual Studio. And C programs run in a C++? Yeah. C++ is an extension of C. So everything that's in C is also in C++. So we can go hash include std stdio.h. In fact, it might be useful just to keep both of these open, and I'll show you the C way of doing it and the C++ way of or the C sharp way of doing it. So there we go, hash include. So you can go int a uh, 5, and then you can go for int i equals 0, semicolon i is less than... 10,000, same column i plus plus, uh, a at position i is equal to the value 99. There's nothing to stop you doing that in C, sure there isn't. Can everybody see what this program is going to do? And what's the result going to be? It's going to break stuff. Will the program, pro will the program compile? Yeah. 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 Uh, will it run? Yeah. <laughs> will, it, will it crash when it's running? Yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe not. <coughs> we'll try it. F5. Access violation, right? So you, that's the kind of errors you get when you're running C. So that's how you do it in C. 
Well, if you, if you weren't using Visual Studio, that probably wouldn't have crashed. What's that? If you weren't using Visual Studio, that probably wouldn't have crashed. Well, we can try it. Like it probably called Segvault. Hmm? Probably called Segvault. I think it'll get a Windows error. So if I can right click on this <coughs> and go to uh, Open Folder Windows Explorer, Windows Explorer, and there's Debug, Windows Explorer, and there's the, and there's the, and there's the where's the exit file? Oh, that again, it's like code. Where's the exit? Oh, there we go. There we do. Exit. Okay, that's what you get. All right. So even Windows, it crashes Windows, right? It crashes Windows, but it crashes when you run it in Windows. All right. So we're looking at this in sharp way. In C sharp, uh, first of all, you can query the array. You can ask the array what's the length of the array, and it will tell you what its length is. So you can go for int i equals zero, semicolon i is less than pages, <coughs> and then you press dot, and Visual Studio brings up all the things that that array can do. So aggregate all, any, as a new rule, as parallel. So lots of different things that this array can do, and these are methods on the array. But if you scroll all the way down here, you'll find that there's one called length. I think that's the one that you're meant to use. Length in C Sharp is what's called a property, and I'll show you how to make properties yourself. But you don't put brackets at the end of it. It looks as if it's a variable, but actually it's not a variable. It's what's called a property in C Sharp. But you can go ages.length to get the length of the array. Now what do we do here? Plus plus i or i plus plus? It doesn't matter. Actually, it doesn't make any difference. So there we go. And now I want to populate ages. So we'll go ages at position i is equals to. Let's use or. And we'll get a property of or. Or dot next gives you a non negative random number. That non negative random number is um, a random number between 0 and the maximum value for an integer. So we'll say in this example here, and this is an example of. Um, something that we talked about last week. I want it to go between 20 and 30. How do I make it go between 20 and 30? So I can modulus 10 and then add 20 to it. So what happens if I modulus 10? I get a value between 0 and 9. All right. So maybe I want to modulus 11 it. And then what do I need to do? So I'll get a value between 0 and 10 if I modulus 11 it. And then if I add 20 to that number, it will go between 20 and 30. Because if it comes out at 0, then I add 22, it gets 0. If it comes out at 10, I add 22, it becomes 30. So we're going to use modulus here. So percentage 11 gives me a number between 0 and 10. And then plus 20. So that gives me a number that goes between 20 and 30. Now at this point, if I want to just test my program, I can hit F9 there to toggle the breakpoint. Hit F5 to run my program in the debugger. And I can hover over ages there, expand ages, and see that I have now got <coughs> values between uh, 20 and 30. So here we go. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah, so how do you do that? How do you do that? Uh, just hit F9 at the end of my program to toggle the breakpoint at a line of code. So F9 toggles a breakpoint. Yeah. And then you go and run your program in the debugger. So I'm going to click stop debugging. So F5 runs the program in the debugger. And once the program hits that line of code, it will pause. Yeah. All right. And then it will hover <coughs> over the variable. Oh, bring your mouse over it. It shows you the variable. It says that it's an, an int uh, with five elements in it, or an int array. And you can expand it like that. Yeah, yeah no, I've actually seen that, but I didn't know you could actually. You could actually yeah. Down, Here, look. I don't know if you realize, you can actually, actually modify these values. Look at that. You can, yeah. So you can modify them. Yeah. Scary. Right? So you can change your running program and change the values in your running program. If, for example, you notice you've got a bug in your program, you don't want to bother recompiling it. You can just fix the variable, test the rest of the program, then go back and fix it. Slightly dangerous to do that, you know? So now I have my array printed out like this. Uh, let's just print these values, okay? Actually, I'll show you two ways of printing these. Brian, what's uh, the key to untake a breakpoint away? F9 toggles it. So it, changes, it turns the breakpoint on and turns the breakpoint off again. Thank you. Okay, so 
probably forgot to put in this, but it's actually a very important concept in C sharp. Is in C sharp you actually have a third type of loop. Uh, sorry, let's see, what, what loops have we got? We got the for loop. We have the while loop, don't we? Do. We have the do while loop. So we got three. In C sharp you got another one. It's for each. And this only works with things in C sharp which are called collections. So it will work for an array. It'll also work for a thing that we'll do later called a list. So you can write for each. I hope I can remember the syntax of this. Uh, let's see. Int age in ages. I think that's the way it goes. Let me just make sure this compiles before you type it in. Yeah, it does. <coughs> first, right? That's called a for each loop, and you can do this for things that are arrays and things that are lists and various other things which are iterable, iterable in the C sharp language. But you go, yeah, can, does that make sense? Yeah. What's going to happen there is for every element in ages, one by one they're going to get copied <coughs> into the variable age. And each time around in the loop, in the loop age is going to represent a different element in the array ages. Does that make sense? So the first time around, the value in the variable age, which only has scope between those curly brackets, is going to be the zeroth element, then it's going to be the first element, then it's going to be the second <coughs> element, then it's going to be the third element. So if you need to iterate over something, you can use it for each one. Does that make sense for everybody? Can you do that with files? I don't think so. Well, I'm not sure. Python, yeah. Oh, possibly. Yeah, Python's great, though. Yeah. There's nothing else <coughs> to do in Python. Uh, you could possibly do it. I don't know. We'll try it. I, I've never tried it before. But yeah, that's called an iterator in C sharp. Okay. So, yeah, this bit I'll get you to think about yourselves, all right? Say I want to calculate the minimum value in that array. Have you done these type of problems before? Minimum, maximum, average kind of type of things? Yeah. yeah. Right, just take a couple of minutes to write down a paper how you think you calculate the minimum value in that array. Rather than me tell you, I'm sure you can remember how to do it. There's several different algorithms for calculating the minimum. So you have an array with five elements. I need to find out what's the lowest value in that array. Well, I'm just going to test something here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so first of all, we'll declare one called min, will we? Yeah. 
probably not a good idea to call it actually min because min sometimes is the name of a method or there's a word in different languages. So let's call this min h just for the hell of it, right? What's that? Equal to zero. Okay. And then compare every element to the array. Swap them. Okay. Compare every element to the array. Um, okay. You go into a for loop. So let's go into a for loop, right? Let's do this one. So there I have a for loop. Um, what do I do in here? If the array i is less than min. A just have position i is less than the min age. Then just copy the array i into the middle. And that gives you the middle of the right? That's so not going to work because you've already min sent zero. Age yeah. equals for ages at position i. Okay. So yeah, let's 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 come back to that. That's exactly right. So we got a bug. I think there's a bug in that, isn't there? We need a high value for the minimum. You need a high value for the minimum. If you set it to be zero, and we say the zeroth element is five, and then the next element is six and stuff, none of those are going to be less than zero. So it'll actually come out this one here as if the minimum age was zero. So just set it to the force value in the array. That's it. One solution. Set it to be the zeroth element in the array. So you can go min age equals ages at position zero, that will work absolutely fine. That presumes, of course, that there are elements in the array. If there's no elements in the array, then you're going to get uh, an exception getting thrown. Is there another way? Two people are 100 years old. Sure. But what if you were talking about the ages of fossils? Good point. Yeah. Anyone, anyone got a better solution? Console that right line bracket ages up me in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> that would possibly work. Yeah, okay, that's a good solution. Yeah, that's the best line of code you ever have to write was the line you didn't have to write. So that's a good solution, right? Um, just in terms of this algorithm, we'll come to that one, right? In terms of this algorithm, how would I modify it? Or is there any way? Here's what I like to do when I'm, when I'm doing these types of problems. So I set it to be a really high value. And the value I'd like to set it to is actually the maximum value for an int. And you get that by going int dot max value. So int dot max value, anyone know what it's going to be? <coughs> What's its actual value going to be? 42,000. Why would it be that number? 8. Okay, let's run the program and see what it's going to be. I predict it's going to be about 65,000. Well, that wouldn't be enough for plus all that. Probably not, no. So maybe we need something else other than an inch. In the normal state, it's probably 42,000. It's not the problem with that. I mean, it's actually huge. Yeah. It's not max value, it's actually that. I wonder why that is. So that means it's um, a 64 bit number, a 32 bit number? 65,000 is for a short. Well, that will be for a 16 bit number. Oh, this is a 32 bit number. Okay, so yeah, sorry, it's are 32 bits, so it would be a really big number. So that's probably going to be 2 to the power of 32 divided by 2. Scientific. 2x to the power of y. 32. Yeah, divided by 2. So 214748. And then when we look at this value over here, hopefully it's the same. 214748. Okay, so that's the value there. Can anyone tell me why I did that calculation? There's negative numbers and positive Yeah, so negative numbers and positive numbers. So it's split between positive and negative <coughs> integers. So the range of it is going to be 2 to the power of 32. And then you divide by 2 to get minus the value all the way up to plus the value. And then that's how you get the value. Cool. All right. I'm glad that worked. All right. So yeah, as um, somebody else pointed out, you could probably also go like this. Min age <coughs> is equals to, uh, how did you do it? Just the array dot min, is it? Yeah, what I did is, I just did the equation and then... Ah, uh, look at that. Cool, that probably works as well. Just yeah, like that. Min, max and average, so... Is average there as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that's awful. So there's nothing left for us to code. <laughs> so what you notice there is that these are methods that are pre-existing on the array class in C-sharp. 
Right, so you can do me and Max and average like that. What's that? Yes, of course. Yeah. What does the other method that I call if you're not the one way the greater than less hand signs do? Like this. When you did that edge stop me in, it yeah. pops up too. Oh, okay. the, oh, the second one is a template one. So it takes a generic, uh, it runs a transform <coughs> function on each element of a generic sequence and returns the minimum. Not really too sure, I'll have to look it up. Yeah. Uh, the, the angle brackets like that, they're called angle brackets, right? So even though they're less than or greater than symbols, they're also known as angle brackets. And they indicate a generic, so you can pass a type as a parameter, that's what it means. But I'm not exactly sure how that uh, ages up in works. So the ages dot max is going to work pretty similarly. We'll write it as We'll write it out just so you're familiar with the algorithms. <laughs> How do you check to see if a value exists in the array? Okay, so take a couple of minutes to write that code. Just checking to see if a value exists. Right? We want to check to see if the value 25 exists in that array or not. How would I write that code? Well, I'll write the minimum max here. Want to just um, finish that one off for me there? That one's calculating the average. What do I need to do at the end? Take the sum divided by. Or whatever your right end dot count is it? Uh, yeah, ages dot length is going to tell you the number of elements in it. So that's going to give you the average. Did you guys figure out how to figure out if something is there or not? Did you just compare it? Okay. Yeah, and would you do a for loop? Yeah. yeah. Or you yeah. just for loop and then you compare the, sure. the number or the variable that holds the number or something. Yeah. yeah. So to check to see if something exists, right, you can just go, uh, this is the way I would do it. <coughs> Boolean found equals false. So set it to be false initially. Uh, and then int to find the thing you're looking for, it's going to be equal to, let's say, 25 or whatever we're searching for. Oops. For int i equals 0, semicolon i is less than ages dot length, semicolon i plus plus, and actually we'll do clear another one here called where. If, ah, uh, you don't really even need where. If ages at position i is equals to two found, two point, and that means we found it. So I set the found variable to be equals to true. And uh, where is equals to i. All right, and then you can go if found. So I'll go right line. Oh yeah, just show you this for the hell of it, right? <coughs> this is another way of doing these console dot right line statements by putting in, as you would have done in C, you would have put in like percentage D, percentage S, etc. So you can put placeholders in here as well. Instead of having to build the string, you can go found that at position open curly brackets one. And then you do comma, and then the variables. So two point at position. <coughs> so I'll just make that big so you can see what I'm doing there. Okay. So 
set up a variable called found is likely to be true. Set up to find, that's the thing I'm looking for. Where I found it at, set it to be initial and find it to be zero. And I iterate through the array element by element, comparing each element of the array with the thing I'm looking for. If I find a match, I'll go found equals true, where equals i. <coughs> Can I modify that at all? Make it better? Okay, maybe not. <coughs> then I, as soon as my for loop is finished, I check the value of the found boolean, and this only gets set to true if it finds a match. Isn't that right? And if I find it, then I can go found this at percent at position this. And what happens is this variable gets replaced here, and this variable gets replaced here. Is that alright with everybody? Yeah. yeah. And also uh, dot contains. Dot contains will probably do the job in one line as well. Yeah, sure. Um, absolutely. Right, we'll do that in a second. Can I modify that code at all? You Make it better. Change, ah. change it to for each and put a break after the found. Yeah, I can either change it to for each, which is fine as well, but I can also put a break here. So what will that do then? Make it more efficient. It will make it more efficient, but what will it return? I at the right value. Yeah. Well, if there's multiples, which one will it return? The first one. It will return you the first one. If you don't put that in there, it will return you the last, the last one. Because it goes all the way through the array. Or maybe it jumps out of the force to for it if, if it actually finds a match for it. Yeah, so as as you probably noticed, there's, there's a lot of built-in stuff in the array class as well. So you can go ages. I wonder, can you go ages dot find? No. Ages dot contains. So Brian, yeah. Did you move the if found statement up into the previous section of code? Will it give you every instance of it? You mean move it inside the loop? <coughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. Um, oh, you probably don't need it there at all. You don't even need to check it. You could just print it here. You know, and then you don't even need to check the found variable. So that, that will basically print it every time it finds it. Then if you get rid of the break there, and you can get rid of this thing here, <coughs> you're going to just um, print it out, and it will print out every occurrence of it. Because as soon as it finds the match, it prints it out straight away. Is that all right with everybody? Is everybody happy with the idea of arrays in C-sharp? Yeah. There's loads of things built into the array, as you've discovered, like contains, minimum, maximum, average. They're built into the array type in C-sharp. <coughs> what, what about 2D arrays? Have you guys done 2D arrays? Yeah. So it's very rare that you need, certainly in my programming career, I don't really ever think that I've needed an array with more than two, two dimensions. But 2D arrays are actually really important, particularly if you want to do games programming or graphics, because you need to use a thing called a matrix uh, in order to do certain graphics operations like transformations, scalings, rotations and stuff. But this is how we do 2D arrays in C-sharp. Say I want to make a 2D array. By the way, is that a valid name for an array? Can I just go like that? Is that okay? I don't think so. No, you have to have a number. Yeah, <coughs> variables can't start with a number. They have to start with a letter. So you could call this a 2D for a 2D array equals new int and then you specify the, the dimensions so we can say an array of 2 and 5. Now the next question is, that 2 and 5, is that the number of rows and columns or columns and rows? What's the order? Rows, rows. rows and columns. So in terms of the array, how wide is that array? I know, but I find it much easier to think of it in terms of rows and columns. It is arbitrary, and, like it's just the head of things organized in memory. But if you want to actually draw them out and stuff like that, it's better to probably think of them in terms of rows and columns. So in, in that example there, how, many, how wide is it? It's five wide, and how many, how tall is it? Two. It's two, because it's got two rows and five columns. So if I was to draw that out, I would find zero, one, two, three, four, and then zero, one, two, three, four. So that's the way I personally would find it easier to understand that. You don't like that, no? Why? <laughs> it's the other way around. It should go X, Y, Z. Oh, no, but it doesn't, though. I mean, that's rows and columns. That's the way matrix are, or matrices are organized. So that has the third one on Let's not go to the third dimension. Let's just stay in the two dimensions where everything is nice and easy to understand. Um, yeah, I guess, you know, the third dimension, if you want to think about it, 
what that's going to do is, certainly in, in graphics, that's going to project things away from you and towards you, you know, through the board and this way. So that's the third dimension. Does that make sense? Ah, what's that? But it isn't width and height. It's not. It's actually height and width. That's the way. Okay. That's the way matrices are working. Everything you do is wrong. If you do maths, if you do maths right, and you learn matrices and maths, which you're going to do, you've done matrices, have you? Yeah. Yeah. Who did you do them with? Uh, did you do them last year? Yeah. Okay, so that's the way matrices are written. They're written as rows and heights. And we shall not argue about this ever again. <laughs> I'm right. <laughs> if you want, you can think of it the other way around. But I encourage you really to think of it as rows and columns. Because if you ever do graphics and stuff like that, that's the way it's done. Rows and columns. Sorry, Brian. Ha. Uh, it says here that uh, I have a problem putting in the FOIA in the array. Same with myself. Oh, yeah? Will you compile yeah. it? No, it's, when I hover over, it's telling me, hang on. Hang on. Inside rank specifier, it's expecting a comment or the closing bracket, but this code, the line of code is the exact same as yours. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I've done it wrong. I think this is the way you do it. Right, I'll just check my example code. Good man for, for pointing that out. Yeah, but it works fine if you don't put the point in. Yeah, but you have to. <coughs> yeah, I So we'll write the inner loop first of all, right? For int call equals zero, semicolon call is less than, now I know that this is going to be, looking at that example here, it should be five, shouldn't it? But in fact, I want to write something that actually asks the array what the dimensionality of it is. How you do that in C sharp is you go uh, a2d dot get length. And then you say, what do you want the length of? Which dimension do you want the length of? And in this case, we want the first dimension. Because the zero dimension is going to return us two, and the first dimension is going to return us five. OK, and now we're going to write the outer loop. <coughs> Zero, so that's going to return me two. So that returns the the um, the length of the zeroth dimension of the array, which is two. Then you could go a to the at position row comma call. It's going to be equals to or dot next. So let's just put random values in here. Then we can print it out row by row, column by column. <coughs> I have to 
position row, comma, cog. What's backslash t mean? Can anyone tell me? The tab. So I'll print the value and then I'll print the tab character just to space it out. And then at the end of every row, I'm going to do right line to print the, to print the uh, character turn. So hopefully that's going to populate the array with random values and print them out as a 2D matrix on the screen. So just let me run this and then I'll put the code up on the screen. Make sure it compiles. Okay. Max age, oh yeah, that should be max age. Variable of four has found its assignment to value that we use. Okay, that's fine. So there we go. Let me set a breakpoint right at the end of the program. And this one there already, so I'll hit F5 to run to that line of the program. Look there, and yeah, there we go. It's printing out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 elements. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. <coughs> I think the tab has actually caused it to go on to a new line by itself because those values are so big. So that's why you get an extra blank line in there, I'm pretty sure. But let's just double check with the code here. We'll make these numbers smaller. So I'll make them go between 0 and 9. And I'll run it again. Hopefully they should all appear on the, without that extra blank line in there. Yeah, and there we go. They're not on the, an extra blank line. Do you want me to put that code up for a second? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sure thing. Try it out yourselves, type it in, right? 2D arrays are really important in lots of different applications. In fact, in the second semester, we're going to make a spell checker. All right, so you can type in a word in English, and it will compare it against the list of known words. It'll use an algorithm called the Levenstein distance algorithm to try and figure out what's the word you were actually typing. Because, you know, you can't just compare them and say, you have to try and find the word that it's closest to. So that's, that's an algorithm called the Levenstein distance algorithm. So that's my 2D array example. So if you want to try it out yourself, just go ahead and type it in. Sorry, why do you need to be erased for the word comparison? For the word comparison. Because when you type a word in, if you were to type in, I'll show you. It's just a pen and paper. I'll give you an example. Say you type in the word F or <coughs> so you might have meant that to be Fred, no? So how do you know that Fred is the one that was actually uh, you know, it could be I mean, how do you know that this is the one you're talking about, not this one? Why would you suggest this rather than this or this word here? Yeah, but what if you type um, X or X? How would you know that maybe Fred is the right one to suggest there instead of Or instead of this one? Why would you pick, okay. why would you pick this word of our other word? Zero of the dimension of the array. And when you do get length one, it's going to return five. 
Yeah. So that tells you which dimension of the array you're talking about. Yeah. So if you're working with three dimensions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Got it exactly. If you're doing a 3D array, which is very unlikely that you have to use, unless you're doing analytics, and then analytics use those sort of things. So that's how they work. You know, they, they, they return the, interestingly, you can get the dimensionality. You can say how many dimensions are in this array. If I go A2D dot rank, and in that case there, A2D dot rank is going to return two to say that there are two dimensions in that array. So actually, we could rewrite this. You know, to make it completely generic, you could make it work for any dimensionality array. In fact, maybe I'll ask you to do that as a, as a lab exercise. You know what, let's take a 10 minute break or a 5 minute break and we'll come back and talk about structs. If you want to wait around, okay, if you want to practice something while you're waiting around. A, A2D dot rank returns you how many dimensions are in the array. So try and rewrite this so that it works with any dimensionality of, of, of array, not just 0 and 1. Will you do that? It'll take five minutes, ten minutes. We'll come back and talk about structs. No, stop taking it.